Are you thinking about moving to Nicaragua but don't know where to begin? Well, lucky for you, you found the right video. Hi, I'm Jay. And I'm John. And we're Bucket List Travellers. And in this video, we're going to answer the question, where should I live in Nicaragua? We lived in Nicaragua for a year and a half during the COVID pandemic. And during that time, we traveled all around the country, visiting 14 out of the 17 departments of Nicaragua. As such, we know a lot about the country and we've had a taste of everything that it has to offer. Nicaragua is the largest country in Central America and it has spectacular scenery. It's got a low cost of living and it is summer all year round. And it's really got something for everyone. And it really does have a wide variety of places to live, including a lot of different climates, a lot of different experiences. So we're going to go through some of the best places to live in Nicaragua so that you can find the right place for you. Okay, so to start, we're going to talk about where we lived in Nicaragua, which was the colonial city of Granada. Yeah, so we were here for over a year and we just fell in love with this city. It's a really beautiful city. It's got lots of colorful buildings. It's really charming. It's got a lot of culture as well, a lot of cultural events. Another great thing about Granada is that it's got a well-developed cafe scene. Yeah, yeah. So especially the area La Calzada, it's a pedestrian street, which is just full of great restaurants and cafes. It really comes alive at night. That's a great place to go. There's a lot of local eateries. There's a lot of expat run places. Yeah, international cuisine. So yeah. you find French. There was a Middle Eastern Mediterranean place called Pitta Pitta, which was one of our favorites. Uh, yeah, that was really good. There's heaps of options for you in Granada. I just really love the atmosphere of the place. Not only that, but it's really centrally located in Nicaragua, so it's only a short drive, what is it, half an hour from the capital of Managua? Yeah, it's, it's between half an hour and an hour drive to the capital of Managua. And it's close to so many big tourist attractions in Nicaragua. Yeah, so if you love your natural beauty, it's a 20 minute drive to Messiah Volcano, an active volcano where you can see into the lava pit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Laguna de Apoyo, which is this amazing crater lake where you can go swimming in... Some you know, of the cleanest water in Central America. Yeah, and it's heated as well. And then you've got all of the attractions around Granada. You've got the Las Isletas, the, what is it, like 300 islands that formed after Mombacho volcano exploded many, many years ago. We highly recommend Granada. It's also a very livable city. It's got three major supermarkets, lots of local markets a big expat community, lots of community events. We've seen a lot of concerts there, a lot of performances, and it's just a lovely place to live. You probably do need a basic level of Spanish to get by, but if you don't, there's a lot of expats that can help you out. Yeah. There's a lot of great accommodation options there, so you can get fully furnished rentals at all sorts of price ranges. Yeah, and, and you can get some amazing colonial houses uh, as well. Yeah. So when we were in Granada, we stayed in this amazing colonial home. Mm, four uh, bedroom home with a pool. So we're heavily biased towards Granada. We love this city. We'll keep it balanced. So a couple of downsides of Granada to be mindful of. It is hot and it can be sticky, but that's generally the case in most of Nicaragua. So just be mindful of that. And we found the internet to be a little bit slower than other areas of Nicaragua. So if you're planning to work online, then this may not be the best city for you. Yeah, in saying that, they do have high-speed internet coming, but I don't think it's quite there yet. In summary, we believe that Granada is the perfect first stop for any retiree looking to move to Nicaragua. The other major colonial city in Nicaragua that's worth mentioning is the beautiful city of Leon. It's got a lot of cafes. It has an amazing cathedral. The rooftop area is just picture perfect. Another benefit of Leon is that it's only about half an hour away from some amazing beaches. So we visited Las Penitas and it, it was really pretty. Yeah, it's a beautiful black sand beach with a few cafes and restaurants nearby and it's a very gorgeous place to spend an afternoon. Yeah, and some great respite from the Leon heat. Definitely. 
it is hot in Leon. So keep that in mind if you're considering Leon. Yeah, throughout the year, it's consistently above 90 degrees Fahrenheit or like 35, 36 degrees Celsius. It is hot. If you like that, then great. It is one of the hottest areas in Nicaragua. Leon is really popular with tourists. However, it doesn't have as large an expat community as Granada. One of the big draw cards of Nicaragua are its beautiful beaches, and it has so many to choose from. The most popular beach area in Nicaragua is probably the beachside area of San Juan del Sur, and that has quite a big expat community. Again, it's got a lot of accommodation options, it's got a great food scene, there's a lot of activities to do, lots of water sports, and they've got good schools there if you've got a family, and it's really well set up for expats. If your Spanish isn't that strong and you want somewhere where you can speak English a lot, then San Juan del Sur is probably the place for you. There really are so many expats in San Juan del Sur. It's really popular with digital nomads as well. Now, I'd say if you were to make a comparison against Granada and San Juan del Sur, San Juan del Sur attracts probably a bit more of the younger crowd, the, yes, as Joe said, digital nomads and Granada's more of the retirees, as a generalisation. Yeah, I'd say there's a lot of partying going on in San Juan del Sur, but you can get out to the beach areas surrounding the main city of San Juan, or and the main town, and it's quite quiet. Yeah, it's quieter. If you like surfing, if you like... The outdoors, generally. The outdoors, yeah. there's even turtle hatching season. So yeah, it really does have a lot to offer and it is a great place to go in Nicaragua. Yeah, and so in terms of the climate, it is hot. However, you get ocean breezes and that, mm. that cools things down a little bit. There is a rainy season in Nicaragua and the roads around the beach areas of San Juan del Sur are not paved, they're mainly dirt roads and so they can get quite muddy so you will need a four-wheel drive most likely if you are living in San Juan del Sur. Also, it's quite a spread out area, so you've got the main town area which has all the cafes and, and hotels, and then outside of the main town is where all the beautiful beaches are. Yeah, so it's about half an hour drive in either direction mm. for, the, for the best beaches. I think if I were to live in San Juan del Sur, I'd really want a four-wheel drive, otherwise it's going to just make your life a bit more difficult. Yeah, to put it in context, there's a road on the way to play Madeira called the Chocolata, and it's called that way, we found out recently, because in the wet season, the road basically turns to chocolate. Yeah, it's just so muddy. Yeah, yeah. As well as that, you probably are going to need to go to one of the bigger cities if you're wanting to do a big shop or get some specialty goods that you don't find in a smaller town. Yeah, so um, Rivas is the largest nearest city to San Juan del Sur and it's about a 45 minute drive so you'd expect to go there uh, maybe a couple of times a month. Yeah, either that or Managua. Yeah, and Managua is about a two hour drive away. One thing that's really great about a lot of the places in Nicaragua is that there'll be food trucks that come to your neighbourhood so that can make things easy. And what other services are there? Well, we found the internet around San Juan del Sur to be really strong. Mm. Uh, some of the fastest speeds in the country, so for example, at least 20 megabytes a second. You've also got expat communities that trade on cryptocurrency and stuff like that around there so yeah it's quite there's a lot of movers and shakers around San Juan del Sur. Yeah a bit of entrepreneurial expat spirit there. So if you're looking for uh, a strong expat community, English widely spoken, a digital nomad lifestyle with strong internet then San Juan del Sur is the place for you. We're halfway through our Living in Nicaragua video. If you are interested in Nicaragua expat life, Nicaragua travel, or travel around the world, then make sure you subscribe. If you are interested in hanging out at the beach, but you want a more quiet area, there are so many other beautiful beach areas in Nicaragua. So a couple that we have to share would be Papoyo. That was probably our favorite beach area in Nicaragua. So mm. that's uh, a long sweeping stretch of white sand. It's a really lovely area, great ocean views, spectacular sunsets. Yeah, and amazing surf as well. So if you are a serious surfer, then the beaches around Popoyo are awesome. So it does have a few really good restaurants and cafes, but it isn't as widely serviced as some other areas like 
Granada and San Juan del Sur. It does have corner stores, but you're really going to have to travel outside of Popoyo to get to your big shops. Yeah, so Rivas is about one and a half hours. And once again, in the wet season, the roads get really difficult as well. Yeah, and the downside with Popoyo is it's got a lagoon and the ocean there, so you do get flooded from both directions. Yeah. Another area that we really loved was El Transito. That is one of the closest beaches to the capital Managua. So that's only about an hour away? Yeah, and it's really close to Leon as well. It's got a really relaxed feel. It does come alive at weekends because a lot of people from the city come to visit on the weekend for a beachside retreat. There's some beautiful houses around there. Again, it does have a few restaurants and cafes, a few local shops. For anything substantial, you are going to have to travel to Managua or Leon in order to do your big shops. If you want all of the conveniences of a large cosmopolitan city, then the best place to live for you would be the capital city, Managua. So life in Managua will have all your mod cons. It's the best city in Nicaragua for shopping. You'll be able to find pretty much anything you need. You'll be able to find pretty much anything that you can get in, in the United States. It's got everything. And it's got a really great food scene there. So lots of international restaurants, really great quality. If you wanna just have a lot of great food options, then that's a great place to live. The internet's really strong in Managua as well, so if you are going to work online, then Managua is not a bad option for you. This is going to be the headquarters for a lot of government offices as well, so it's going to be a lot more convenient for getting your visas renewed or your residency application approved. So it is a very sprawling city and the traffic can be bad, but it's got a lot of really nice green leafy neighbourhoods. So Los Robles and Las Colinas are very popular with expats and there's a lot of accommodation options available to suit all budgets. Managua is very well connected to everywhere else in Nicaragua and it also has the international airport so you can get in and out of the country quite easily. In terms of downsides, Jay mentioned the traffic. It is quite a sprawling big city. That's not for everyone and it doesn't have the same colonial charm as a city like Granada or Leon. If you're looking for more of an alternative lifestyle then Ometepe Island is the place for you. Yeah, so this island is in the middle of Lake Nicaragua and it is an amazing place. It just looks so magical. It's got two volcanoes, one of them's active and everywhere you look, it's just spectacular natural beauty. There are small fishing villages all around the island. It's a really laid back way of life. It's just so beautiful. There is one area, Maya Galpa, which does have high speed internet. The rest of the areas, the internet's really patchy and you might not be able to drink the tap water depending on what part of the island you're in. And there are a couple of alternative communities, particularly around the Balgay area. If you're wanting to find somewhere where you can just be at one with nature and get in touch with other people that like an alternative lifestyle, then that could be a great option for you. If you've fallen in love with the idea of moving to Central America but want to escape the heat, then there are plenty of options for you in Nicaragua. So the northern highlands of Nicaragua have a great mild climate all year round and they're a perfect place to live. They've got a small but enthusiastic expat community, there's a lot of coffee plantations and a really good food scene up there as well, particularly around Esteli. Yeah, Esteli was an amazing city for us. We just fell in love with it. As Joe was saying, the food scene's amazing. You have the best steaks in Nicaragua. Mm. Uh, there's a wide variety of different cuisines, both local and international in Esteli. And the coffee is amazing. Yes, uh, there's a really strong cafe scene in Esteli as well. Esteli is probably the largest city in northern Nicaragua. You've also got options like Matagalpa and Hinatega, and they're beautiful cities as well. And if you want to really live out in the countryside, then this is a great place to come as well. There's a lot of 
beautiful farmlands in the area. It's great for a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle. One of the downsides around Esteli in particular is that the cost of living is a bit higher than some other areas of Nicaragua, especially for accommodation and for, for restaurants and cafes. But in saying that, the quality is really good. So I think it's quite worth it. Now, the other thing is that we couldn't find much rental accommodation that's fully furnished for long-term stays around Esteli in particular. So if you're looking to just try it out and see how you go, then you really can only stay in hotels. In terms of internet speeds, we found Esteli to be really strong, so around 25 megabits a second. However, in Matagalpa and Hinatega, the internet speeds were much slower and a lot patchier. One thing to bear in mind is that these cities are around a two hour drive to Managua. That said, Esteli has most of the amenities that you're going to need. And because of Esteli's amenities, you won't need to travel to Managua that often. If you're after a milder climate in a more central location, then consider Hinatepe and the White Towns. So the White Towns are Katarina, Diriomo and Mazatepe. And these are beautiful areas. They've got small towns. They're mainly locals, so you will need a fair bit of Spanish to live here comfortably. But they've got a lot of really nice farms all around these towns that are only like a 10 minute drive from town. So that makes it quite convenient. A lot of these places have great food scene, lots of cafes and restaurants, local shops, local markets, and a few services like dentists and other medical professionals. Yeah, and so they are about an hour drive or so from the capital of Managua. And they're well connected by buses as well. So we stayed in Hinatepe for a couple of weeks and we found the internet to be uh, quite fast. However, there were a number of outages in the weeks that we were there. And that was mainly due to the electricity going down. So I guess in farm areas of Nicaragua, you do have more spotty electricity services. So we really recommend if you do decide to live here, get solar, get a battery, and that will keep your internet and electricity a lot more stable. Yeah. So, and another downside of living in these areas that if you need specialist medical services, you're most likely going to need to go to either Granada or Managua. In saying that, it's only an hour's drive away, so that shouldn't be an issue most of the time. We hope this video has been helpful in understanding the amazing places that you can live in Nicaragua. And we've really just scratched the surface, so if we've missed anywhere, then please let us know in the comments. And we've also got a more comprehensive outline of these areas on our website. With the pros and cons. Yep, so that's jjbucketlisttravelers.com. And we'll put a link in our description for you. We hope you've enjoyed this video about expat living in Nicaragua. We are Bucket List Travelers. See you next time.